Welcome to Power Factory 2018. This presentation highlights a few of the features which you will find described in the What's New document. As always in annual updates to Power Factory, the changes range from small improvements and enhancements to major developments offering new functions to the user. Before looking at some of the major changes in new functionality, I will show you a few things which have been done to make Power Factory more user friendly. For example, there is now a search facility for graphics. In geographic diagrams, this can also be used to find locations such as towns or streets. Improvements have also been made to the handling of plots. The general nomenclature has been made more intuitive and the insert plot function improved to make it easier to find what you need. Another change which you will soon notice when you start using the new version is the data colouring. Here a load flow has been run. We can see the operation scenario data highlighted in blue. The power set points are coloured differently to indicate the characteristics are applied and green is used for the load flow calculation results. The same conventions are used in the object dialogues and the colours are configurable in the user settings. Significant changes have been made to the global library, now called the Dixilent Library. To start with, the overall structure of the library has been simplified and improved. The models, types and so on are now versioned. We have introduced a concept of minor and major version changes. Minor version changes will be implemented automatically when a Power Factory installation is updated by the user. But major changes, that is, those which could have a material effect on calculation results, are not implemented automatically, but the updated version can be selected by the user. The older version remains available and used by default, so as to ensure consistency of results. And now, all protection devices are stored within the Dixilent library. This means that the user no longer has to download protection devices from our website. In a major new development, Power Factory now offers probabilistic analysis for load flow and optimal power flow calculations. Operators of large networks in particular need to be sure that their networks are viable for all expected operating conditions. With this new function, the user can associate distributions with input parameters. Then the probabilistic analysis uses a Monte Carlo or quasi Monte Carlo approach to generate a distributed range of outcomes. For the inputs to the calculation, Standard types of distributions can be used, or distribution curves can be estimated from characteristics using this tool. In this project, distributions have already been created for loads and generators. Let us look at a load to start with. The distribution has been based on a specified load characteristic. For wind generators, a standard Weibull distribution can be combined with the wind power curve. It is also possible to create correlations between distributions, 
something which is essential when considering renewable generation. In this example, the distributions of four wind generators are correlated to 0.98, meaning that for each sample of the analysis, they will always have very similar output. Once the data is prepared, the calculation can be done. The calculation type, method, and number of samples is selected and the calculation executed. This will take some minutes to run, but once it has finished, the results are stored and can be reloaded at a later point, as I will do now. Statistical results are now available for all network elements, such as maximum and minimum values, mean and standard deviation. And the results for individual elements can be visualised in a plot. Here we see the loading of a selected line across all samples and the convergence of the confidence interval with the number of samples. It is also possible to replay individual draws of the Monte Carlo analysis to look at the state of the network in more detail. For contingency analysis, a new feature called Remedial Action Schemes is now available. Sometimes known as SIPs, the Remedial Action Scheme or RAS consists of one or more events that are triggered during contingency analysis. Unlike events that are built into contingency fault cases, the execution of events in a RAS depends on topological factors or post-fault conditions found during contingency analysis. In this particular example, a RAS has been set up to reduce generation in any contingency which causes branch NE3 to be overloaded. To illustrate the effect of the RAS on the post-fault flows, I will execute a single contingency which causes the circuit to be overloaded. First of all, I will deactivate the RAS to make it unavailable. contingency is executed and we can see the overload on NE3. When the contingency is repeated with the RAS available, we can see that the post fault flow is reduced. Using the contingency analysis dialog, it is possible to specify which of the available RASs should be considered. The contingency analysis is run and we can see from the output window which of the RASs have been triggered. A RAS can be quite simple but it is also possible to represent more complex situations by combining triggers and using logical gates, which can be nested. A new feature has been developed for RMS and EMT simulations. Called calculation of frequency response, it takes an existing dynamic model and derives from it a single input, single output transfer function. This then gives the user a representation in the frequency domain. For example, the user may wish to tune a PSS model for a generator. The frequency response calculation enables the transfer function of the AVR to be obtained. This project has been set up appropriately for such an exercise. This is the AVR model which we are interested in.
This is the new calculation of frequency response command. As you can see, both Bode and Nyquist plots are available to represent the transfer function. The basic options have already been defined. So now we just need to specify which DSL model we wish to analyse. The input signal of the transfer function can now be selected. The output signal has already been added. It represents the electrical torque of the generator controlled by the AVR. Now the analysis can be executed. The plots are generated automatically. We can see here in this Bode plot the magnitude and phase of the transfer function plotted against frequency. For users of the protection modules, some new visualisation tools are available. I will demonstrate the first of these in this model, which has several relays at locations shown in red on the diagram. The functions are accessed via the new protection graphic assistant. First, I will demonstrate the reach colouring function. This is used to represent the zone reach of the selected distance protection devices according to their settings. In this example, two relays have been selected, which are located here in the network. The colouring options can be configured. Then the reach colouring is executed. The colouring gives a good view of the protection coverage for the protected network and makes it easier to see where there could be gaps, for example. Another new option available through the protection graphic assistant is to create short circuit sweep diagrams, allowing plotting of a range of results against distance, reactance or impedance following a short circuit sweep calculation. We have here a simple network with four relays. A path has already been created. Short circuit sweeps are not limited to protection analysis, but the protection graphic assistant enables the necessary options to be easily configured. On the basic options page, the short circuit sweep calculation is configured. In this case, two fault types have already been selected. On this page, as well as specifying the path, the quantities to be plotted are also selected. The tool will find the correct blocks in the relays and plot the results. Tripping thresholds could also be shown on the plots. The short circuit sweep is executed and the plots are created. For example, looking at relay 2 at busbar B, the top plot shows the variation in current as seen by the relay with respect to the single phase to earth fault position. We can see where the current exceeds the threshold. On the lower plot, the variation in the angle between the polarising voltage and the operating current is shown. Finally, whatever you're using Power Factory for, you may find yourself wishing that certain objects in the model had more attributes so that you could store additional data. Well, now it is possible to, for you to define such attributes yourself in a new development called Data Extensions. The attributes are easily created within a project using the Data Extensions Configurator tool. Here are some I prepared earlier, for example, for synchronous machines.
the user-defined attributes are treated like the inbuilt attributes. They can be added, for example, to flexible data pages. And the data can be managed using DPL or Python scripts or populated from external sources using DGS imports. I have shown just some of the new features in Power Factory 2018. There are also new models and interfaces, and there are many more new features and enhancements and additional options included at our customer's request. You will find details of all these in the What's New document, which can be accessed from the download area of our website.